Uh, yesterday, um, Chris Hipkins came up with the lottery for uh, Gabriel thing we're taking and many observing it's a bit like John Key's response to the Christchurch earthquake. Good idea. Anything that can help the people who have been so severely affected there and still pictures and stories emerging that are, are very grim and very sobering reading. Um, one sector hit hard, uh, and geez, it, well, the whole country's been hit hard year after year, it seems, is the retail sector, and they're saying they need some special support in the wake of Gabriel. Joining us now is the CEO of Retail New Zealand, Greg Harford. Greg, uh, welcome back to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, how many retailers are in the cyclone or subtropical storm-affected region? Oh, look, I, I don't have a, an exact number, but it is certainly into the hundreds. Um, there's a lot of businesses up there, many small businesses, uh, family businesses that are really, really struggling. They were struggling before the cyclone came through. Uh, about 30% of our members are telling us they're not confident they're going to survive the next 12 months. Um, and now with the, uh, the, the you know, collapses in sales that we've seen over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, it really is a pretty dire situation. Okay. I imagine um, some businesses simply cannot open, cannot retail. Yeah, well, that's, that's right. That was certainly the case for a little while. I think most businesses now are up and running again, although yep. there are still some that are closed. Yep. Um, but the problem is that you, you take away a big chunk of cash flow um, over even a relatively short period and you tip a pretty fragile business from being um, marginal into, into being seriously lost. Yep. Now, you people. are calling on the government to reintroduce a COVID-type wage subsidy scheme for retailers or businesses in the affected areas? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw the first wage subsidy actually was after the Christchurch earthquakes all the way, um, you know, back in, uh, you know, 10 years ago. We saw them again in the Kaikoura earthquakes. Uh, we saw them through COVID. They have been an effective way of keeping people employed and keeping businesses, um, just giving them enough to, to kind of keep going. And we think it's really important um, that, that, uh, that that happens this time as well. Um, the Prime Minister, of course, has announced uh, some additional support uh, coming in and being administered through uh, local chambers of commerce and what have you. Um, there's still a bit of detail to, to work through there, as we understand it, um, but that is that is a positive move. Okay. Um, you can insure for this. You can have uh, business interruption and other insurances, can't you? Greg, surely that's on down on the businesses to do that, your members. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can absolutely insure, and, and many uh, retailers do have business interruption insurance, but most businesses don't have um, insurance at a level that will give them the, the level of cover they need to All right. survive. So, so Greg, in some that, ways you are asking the taxpayer to subsidise businesses that have not protected themselves. We're well, rewarding think, bad, bad behaviour here is what I'm saying. No, what, what we're finding is that there are many businesses that simply can't afford the insurance premium. Well, then they, they can't afford to be in business, Greg. Well, that's, that's exactly the point, Sean. And unfortunately, the problem is that if you close down uh, many of these businesses that are pretty fragile at the, at the best of times, um, you pretty much destroy town centres up and yeah, down Yeah, but Greg, Greg, a business's job isn't to keep a town centre going, it's to be a profitable business. <laughs> that's absolutely right. And businesses are aiming to do that. But when you have these unforeseen and possibly... Yeah, but you can insure against right? these unforeseen events, Greg, and many businesses do. That's right, but many businesses also don't get the level of cover that they need or simply can't Then that is their fault. Why should I, as a taxpayer, subsidise them? Because businesses, um, in many cases, are, as I say, the glue that holds uh, communities together. Yeah, well, 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 well that's, that's tough, Greg. Greg, it just seems to me there's a certain element of this. I mean, would you delineate so you'd only give money to the businesses that didn't have insurance? So you're actually also penalising the guys who do spend the money to, yeah, to no, save I, I, for a rainy day. Yeah, I, I, I think what I'm saying, Sean, is that these are really very exceptional circumstances and, and there is a need for everyone to rally around and support some of the businesses that actually are supporting local communities. All right, OK. Well, have you had any feedback from the government as to whether or not they're considering it or they would consider a general... I mean, it could be part of a general wage subsidy, couldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it, it could. We haven't had any direct feedback to, to the letter we wrote the last week. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back. All right, Greg. Greg, do you see what I'm kind of saying, though? We cannot constantly... 
constantly just have the government paying for everything. Bad things happen on a regular basis to businesses, and, and there are ways for them to ameliorate the effects of that. Uh, ab absolutely, Sean, but I think it's important to remember the context in which everyone's operating. And if you're in a world where your business is paying um, substantial amounts of money in tax, you're paying substantial amounts of money in tax, you've got all oh, these extra costs no, coming the cost, in. That's the cost of doing business. Well, it is, but if you want businesses to uh, survive and prosper and be able to you know, take out... I want good and, businesses to survive oh. and prosper. Uh, yeah, then, then I think we do need to have a slightly broader conversation about the, the business environment and what we can do yep. to ensure that businesses can actually manage. All right, I hear you, and I thank you very much for your time this morning. That's Greg Half of the CEO of Retail New Zealand. Now, someone says it's pouring in Hastings at the moment. It's rained for 12 to 15 hours. Could you ring in if you're there and tell me if we're heading towards a bad event? Though I do again stress, and I will always stress, we are not a civil defence aligned um, organisation, um, so don't rely on us. I'm just interested to know that how you people are doing up there, but apparently lots of rain again in the subtropical Gabriel affected, storm Gabriel affected areas. Um, I don't know. Look, look I, I think we got uh, post the earthquake and during COVID, we got very, very used to. Um, Putting a hand out for the government. You can insure against this stuff. And I don't want to subsidise bad businesses that without a government handout or without the government propping them up would fail, would otherwise fail. That is bad business. 